and welcome to this edition of What a Horse. We have Mr. Chase Williams filling in for Jerry Williams today. Glad to be back, guys. Uh, Glad uh, to be back. Uh, looking forward to having some pretty good discussions. But before we do, we're going to take a short pause for our sponsors. Then we will be right back. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Watch for Eli Cunningham as he rides into Lebanon under a new show pleasure division on It's the Medalist and Yakety Yak. Eli and It's the Medalist have been in the winner's circle many times through the years, and this year they are going for top honors at the 86th National Celebration. Eli will be teaming with Yakety Yak for their first appearance in the Big Oval. Eli and his family ask for your support as he rides for spotlight honors during the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultured and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one in a lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab-grown diamond viewing, call 931-563-7800. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All righty. A couple of announcements. B.B. and Maxine Beasley are home. Uh, Maxine, today is Tuesday. This show will air this evening and tomorrow. But she is coming home today, uh, and Maxine has already been home. Um, and with luck, they will be showing in celebration. I'm glad to hear. I'd heard Boy, that they were in a bad accident. Well, it, My prayers are with them. Well, it, it really it, it, it was on my mind hot and heavy because those, those girls are very special they uh, mm -hmm. uh it takes you a while for them to adjust to you and and start talking to you but once they do they they very intelligent young oh, ladies yes. and oh, yes. uh, great cooks boy they can make some cookies like you ain't ever seen also uh jerry williams not here today because a uh, longtime horse lady sharon higginbotham passed earlier this morning she'd been sick for quite a while she's a long time customer of Jerry Williams and even had horses with his father. So I uh, want the family to know that they're in our prayers and uh, 
Jerry will be back next week. Now we're going to get down to business. <laughs> this is uh, going to be interesting right here. Tell me about it. This, the whole thing boils down to there's been three letters sent to the USDA and uh, there's been one that was sent to the, um, to, well, two to Vilsack, but one was sent to Phyllis K. Fong, the Inspector General, U.S. Department of Agriculture. And all of it is concerning the inspection process of two individuals. And um, our dear friends, Carrie McHenry and Amy Adams. And, and, and Chase, I guess what I'm saying, I have watched videos of inspections by all of them. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a difference in the inspection process. One of them, and, and what I want to do is I want to first show the inspection process they show from on their website. It's the way that they, what they say is courses. the correct way to do it. The, the correct way to do it. Now this is this is what they put out there that their employees do to inspect horses. Now if you notice, she's inspecting the pastern. She's palpating with the ball of her thumb. Mm -hmm. She's not reaching up and sticking her finger down in the pocket. <laughs> she's not doing any of that stuff. She's doing it the correct way. Well, I mean, to our viewers that may not understand this, you know, in other countries, where she's palpating right now, right in the middle of that pocket, there's a vasculature nerve nexus that if you manipulate that the wrong way, you're going to get a false positive. Right. I mean, I could go out to any pasture today and check a horse in properly using that technique, and they're going to move, even they though we know that they're not, that they are compliant. Right. So. Well, once they found that out, they, they used it drastically. Correct. Now, we're going to show some inspection processes by Carrie and Amy, the way they inspect horses. Which is completely incorrect, I might add. Oh, very, a, a lot, plus the fact that that right there is the soul. Now, he is inspecting properly. Mm-hmm. And I believe this is an American saddlebred. This is a saddlebred horse. But if 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 you time Doctor Dassault, he spends what maybe a minute on each foot. Maybe he knows what he's looking for. Here he is with a Tennessee walking horse. It takes him from you know a minute to just under two minutes to because he does it the proper way. Now here's Doctor McHenry, and this horse here is clearly showing signs of being not in compliance. Yep. And because it is she's, a saddlebred. She is doing a fault. Now, this now, is my favorite video. This is now, straight up assault. Now, this one is a Tennessee walking horse in the way she treats the people in the walking horse industry. Mm -hmm. She should be fired for this video. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add my voice to the congressmen that are attached to this letter. See. Mark Green, Scott Desjardins, Andy Ogles, Donna Hashberger, Chuck Flashman, John Rose, and Harold Rogers, that she be fired. Well, she should be fired for several different reasons. Now, this is Amy doing her inspections. Using the point of her thumb, not the flat of the thumb. Right. And I believe this is the one where she kind of sticks her thumb down the pocket. But some of the videos that we've got, now here's the young lady from war trace and the way she inspected which was exactly the way they inspect on their website mm -hmm. she's following the rules that's it and that was my horse mm -hmm. so i was proud that it was usda certified the, these are just things that that people need to know the reason why all these letters are going to washington because it it, when you have to complain about VMOs not following the, the letter of the law, really, and creating violations, it's bad. But it goes back further because part of this complaint 
was the way they blindsided the industry back at the beginning of the year. Oh, the, the, the infamous March letter? Yes, when they sent a letter in two hours before, it was an email, that they notified them that they were going to make changes in the inspection process. Now, here was what they did. One of them was the USDA will discontinue referring any horses to a DQP for inspection. They will no longer require hair loss associated with non-compliant tissue. And regarding inadequate DQP performance will be done at events. No discussions on it. And then include not limited touching of USDA staff, which I think that means if you walk up and do what Kerry McHenry did to the young lady, that they can charge you with assault. But what really gets me is at the first show, they wrote a violation on a horse for having a fail scar. It was referred back to the DQP, which they had just said they would no longer do. And it was referred back because they wanted the DQP to write a ticket for that fail scar right there. The DQP refused because of the letter. So she says, well, I'll just write it for inflammation, which that's the, the, good, the easy trip out. The, the issue here is the USDA is kind of operating in a very blind zone right now mm -hmm. with, with the Chevron doctrine being overturned and all these lawsuits flying every which way and they're legitimate lawsuits with the USDA asked in one lawsuit to be let out of, and I don't think the judge is going to grant it. I don't Not either. the Fifth Circuit, folks. He likes them to the government. But the issue that you have here is you have, you know, Kerry McHenry and Amy Adams are not applying the law properly. These are left-wing wackadoos that are out to enforce an agenda, not the law. And their behavior over the last several years has gotten worse and worse and worse. And they're creating false positives, which then they take to administrative law judge and put you on a multi-year suspension and a multi-thousand dollar fine. These people have to be stopped. And I like the fact that Representative Comer, and who's the chairman of the Government Oversight Committee, is sitting here asking the Office of the Inspector General to look into these people because these people do not need to work for the federal government. They need to be fired immediately. immediately. They are disgusting There's disgraces. There's proof out there. Out of all the DQPs and all the BMOs, the only two that there's a problem with are those two. Yes. Because the DQP and the other VMOs, they agree with each other 99.9% .9 of the time. These are the only two that is a problem. And that, to me, is the major issue of everything going on. Well, I mean, uh, these, these congressmen say, uh, since then assigned, VMOs Kerry McHenry and Amy Adams have aggressively inspected show horses and issued significantly more violations than the issued violation average of all other VMOs. The vigorous inspections by McHenry and Adams lacked scientific jurisdiction That's it. and severely disrupted walking horse shows. Due to the consequential impact of inspections, we urge the immediate reconsideration of the Tennessee walking horse inspection assignments of both VMO McHenry and VMO Adams before the Tennessee walking horse celebration in August of 2024. So congratulations, ladies. You've got six congressmen that say that you need to be fired well, because you have be. messed up so bad. Well, I, I don't think they messed up. I think they followed what they were told to do. I really do. I, I think that they, they take it on their self, but in all honesty, and just to give them a bit of the doubt, someone is okay in what they're doing. Well, we were told that they were the best that McHenry was the best BMO they had. Who said that? That's what one of the guards said. <laughs> he said, he said, hey, so, they, so, they say she's one of the best. So for people with drug addictions, there's hope for you after all.
Well, there I said it. I mean, but, but, I'm not going to say that. But, but let's, I mean, these people are messing with an industry that provides 20,000 jobs in the state of Tennessee, nearly $3.2 billion of economic mm -hmm. impact. And, you know, th th this is crazy. Well, it's all for one thing. If you, if you look at, the, at the, where they're at and who pushed for that, it all relates back to one group. Pete and ASPCA and HSUS. That's it. They're the ones that actually, I believe, wrote the PAST Act. They did. Because it's word for word what they wanted. Well, and what these two ladies do is word for word what they wanted. The, the PAST Act was written by Ed Whitfield's wife, who was an attorney for HSUS. Right. This is why Ed Whitfield got thrown out of Congress in disgrace, because he was allowing his wife, who is a lobbyist, to have unfettered access to his office. That's it. That is against the law. That's against ethics of Congress. So when they realize the PAST Act is a no-go, that, that Congress just really isn't interested, at least on the Senate side, they said, okay, we'll go another way. We're going to use this as rulemaking. And that's exactly what this rule is that we're fighting. It's the PAST Act in rule form. Well, they, they came out with this. And, of course, it's, it's supposed to go into law the first of the year. I've got my doubts that it will ever be successful because it goes against everything they were told. They, they paid for the scientific uh, academic The National study. Academy of Sciences right. study? They paid for that, but they did not follow any of the suggestions. Correct. None. They were supposed to give them due process years ago None. Then they come back and say, well, they can appeal it later. So you serve your time, and then they you know, you can well, appeal it. But I, there's one other thing. I want you to know this. Those fines that you were talking about, mm -hmm. this is the way the government works. I'm not going to call the gentleman's name, but I verified this yesterday. There was a gentleman that was given a one-year suspension and a $6,000 fine. Mm-hmm. He told him to shove it. He wasn't paying the fine, and he'd just give his horses to his relatives. That he didn't care. He was, he was as old as I am. It's a big deal. He's suspended. They come back and said, "Well, if you will agree to it, we will reduce the fine to ten dollars." Now, ten dollars was the bait to get a conviction, to get a guilty plea. The ten dollars. I want to thank this gentleman, I'm not going to call his name, but I thank you for telling them to take their $10 and shove it, because he did not accept it. I, that's great news. So it's fantastic news, because it goes to show that sometimes it's kind of like goes back when I was fighting Clint C. Mm -hmm. Any time I could have settled with him and walked away, wouldn't have had to pay my attorney another dime. But my exact words to my attorney to tell him was I would walk through Hades with gasoline underwear on before I gave him a dime or admitted <laughs> anything to him. And that's a cold, hard fact. I, I would not give him the benefit of the doubt on anything because he was as big a crook as these people are. Now, let's uh, go and look at some coats over at a very good friend of mine. I went to Spencer Benedict's this weekend. They had a ton of nice coats over there. I heard that they sold like 18 over the course, yeah. something like that. Well, I talked to one gentleman, he was sitting there, and again, I'm not gonna call names, except Billy Morgan, he's I getting like in the color. picture. They had a ton of good ones over there, and they even had a basketball player. If I played, this guy right here was tall. But I talked to one now, gentleman that he had right already bought two or three and he said, we're within $250 of making the deal. And uh, he said, we'll make the deal for the day is over. <laughs> well, this black coat right here, I like how he moves. His back breaks like it should. His tail's going side to side. I mean, I'd like to have him as a yearling league coat. Hey, well, they had several of them over there. And this was Saturday. They, they started Friday night. But uh, it's just, uh, there's Mike. He's, he's getting it done. But now they had some. I mean, extremely nice horses. Mm -hmm. 
That's a good way to spend a day. If you don't have a horse show, mm -hmm. just go watch them walk. You can see a bunch of good ones that way. Well, you know, when they're born, they're all freaks when they're a month, you know, up yeah. to about a month old. And it seems like when they're baby babies, that month seems to be the separating point. And if they keep walking like this, this gorilla colt here with, he's using his back legs. If they keep doing that post a month old, they're going to keep that the rest of their life. That's how I kind of pick lead colts. And, and I pick colts that will go either way, either flat shot or performance, depending on how you shoot them. Well, they, uh, we got we did an interview with Spencer, and he's going to make a major announcement during this interview, which I think is really, really smart, really smart. But you can see some of these co coats move a lot better than the other ones, mm -hmm. and, and some of them are just outstanding. And these are Omaha, Zorro, I, told I haven't Billy, seen a bad one yet. Well, I told Billy that he needed to be leading one of them up there, and he said that uh, he couldn't, but Mike uh, told me, he said, get him out there, I'll get him up and down the hall with this. <laughs> he said, I'll just take the, 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 the little thing at the end of it, I'll just use the wheel. <laughs> Laurie Toome was there. You know, I had a, I got a, message from a guy well actually three different times i've got messages from three different people wanting laurie toon's bidding video that we did where she talks about the different bits mm -hmm. and out how each one of them helps a lot of people interested in that black coat right there will make a real good two-year-old padded horse he's got a lot of suspension in his front yep. legs a lot of airiness to him Tell you what, and when he slows it. down, look at his back leg, the yep. overstride there. There was a now bunch this, of them. This red colt, I really like him. Spencer had a barn full of them now. I mean, he had a barn, and, and all of them were not by his studs, because he let other people mm -hmm. bring some colts in there, which I think is you know, supporting the industry yeah. what it is. So he just opened it up and said, no, nope. said, you want to, bring them on. My Wingland is by Jose, it ain't so, and we bought, they were over, we bought the mare and the baby from uh, Spencer, and I just love her. I mean, she, she's been a little bit of a challenge to get her halter broke, but she did real good over the PC, uh, the, uh, not PC, the Twia Splash Show Saturday in Columbia. She did real good. They're producing some nice colts over there. Well, they work, and they, they think about it, and I'll, I'll tell you something else I like about Spencer's. He didn't just pinpoint one stud. He talked about different studs, mm -hmm. especially when he and I were just standing around talking. He pointed out the, the good part about the different studs. A lot of places you go, they promote one stud or two yeah. studs mainly. Well, he was promoting all of his, and he's producing good coats out of all of them. Well, you know, I like the El Zorros. Oh, I do too. You know, I, I, he puts a fine head on him. Like, I bet this is an El Zorro, if I had to guess. But look at his, how he moves out of his shoulder. He drives off his back legs, and that tail's just swishing side to side. Well, there's an Omaha, a bay coat over there that's just phenomenal looking, but it was already marked sold. Well, I bet but, it was. Well, Billy, Billy told me he said he's already sold, but we could sell him again. <laughs> Look at there, the way that's moving. Already got that good head shake with him. Mm -hmm. Right here he is. Oh yeah. Now he he was he was something else. He is nice. I'd slow him down just a little touch and let him walk yeah. walk next to you, but he's just looking at bit. He wants to go visit him. Hey, he he's he's got a lot to get up and go in him now. He did. I, I told him, I said, now he's ready to go. Notice how that music matches mm -hmm. that walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wouldn't know nothing about that, would you? No, I wouldn't know a thing about it. But yeah, I haven't seen a bad coat. Not, yeah. one, not a bad I, one. I did not see a one. Uh, I was eating a donut, and, and I happened to put my hand out and that filly that was in the, in the stall there, 
got her a bite. There's Dexter, he's giving one of them a ride. <laughs> I mean, you know, I see cults so far in these videos, some that might be more flat shod prone, some that are more performance prone, and I've seen a few that could go either way. I mean, I wouldn't mind having all of them in my barn. No, well, I'm gonna tell you, that this is the way I look at it, and people need to realize it. This is the walking horse industry. The flat shod was the one that started the industry. The flat shod is the door to the industry. And I'm talking about your trail horses, your flat shot classes, and your performance horses is what really gets the excitement going. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it from top to bottom, the flat shot industry is getting to be just as exciting you. If, you, if you want to watch a good horse walk. More to your point, for, for, the, for our breed to survive, you need a balance, a healthy balance of both. Right. You can't go without one without the other. Because like you said, the, the flat shod divisions, a lot of times those horses are a little bit more affordable. Yeah. And you can get in and get to showing. And, you know, and, and over the course, you upgrade horses, you trade up or you save up and buy another one. This is why I wish that we had more 4-H classes yep. to let the 4-H kids come and show with we us. We bring the academy back. We, we, the, the things we need most, we're, we're, right now, we're, we're not doing. The academy was a great program. It was. And I mean, even they even had adults in the academy class. Well, I think that the biggest problem with academy is the... the Showing. It, it's the cost of keeping those horses available. Right. And I think that there may be ways that we could get grant monies from the state, from the federal government, to help the, any trainer that would want to participate in that program to help with the upkeep of those horses because academy is very important. And so other academy breeds- was alive, we, we tried that. And uh, Denise Rowland helped. I remember we, it. We even met with, with a congressman and talked to him about it. And it was, wasn't as though we could get them to Agree. It is, uh, this is something we can work on, which is always a congressman's prom, uh, promise. Yeah, we'll work we on can, it. We'll we work can, on we'll it. We'll work on it. I, I like it when uh, I asked Judge Matheny to help on this video bill. Mm -hmm. Well, he he got it. He got it done for me. So that's the kind of congressman we need. There's more of them. And I believe right now we're going to have to take another break for our sponsors, but we will be right back. Enjoy. Well, I thought we were. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry. World Grand Champion, Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000. Or select Amateur Show Pleasure World Grand Champion, El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. Watch for Ali Jo Jacobs during the 86th National Celebration when she competes for the highest honors aboard Ain't He Grand in the 11 and under equitation division. Ali Jo will be guiding Switchblade in the 11 and under pony division as she goes for championship honors in a highly competitive division. In the youth 11 and under mare division, Ali Joe will be guiding I Sang Dixie as they thrive for top honors. The Jake Jacobs family asks for your support as Ali Joe Jacobs rides for your approval. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go.
right, welcome back. Now, I told you about the uh, interview I did with Spencer. So uh, I'm gonna let everybody see this because this right here, there's a great announcement that I agree, Jerry Williams has been doing this for a couple of years now and, and even going as far as it's working a little bit on trail horses. But Spencer Nam's fixing to make a major move and I think it is. I think it's a good thing. Hey, it, I've it, done it. it. It's a great thing to do. It and it's smart and it just supports the industry that much more. But mm -hmm. let's go to Spencer Benedict. I am here with Spencer Benedict. We're at Spencer's Barn over at Jacobs Farm in Christiana, and we've seen some mighty fine coats this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got we've got several. We've had about 28, I think. We. Uh, uh, we started yesterday. We had about eight sales yesterday. I already had a couple this morning, and activity's good, enthusiasm's up, and everything's going along well. Well, I talked to a gentleman a few months ago. He said he was with a few hundred dollars of making a deal, but and before he left, he'd probably take it. <laughs> there you go. That's right. That's what we're, we're trying to put them all together. We're trying to make it work, make well, now, it good for everybody. Name some of the studs that you have here, because. I've been going down through there. There's some beautiful Omahas down there. The Omaha, Omaha, of course, we're real proud of him. He's uh, the maiden, the, the B. Purdy horse that won the maiden class. He knows right. by Omaha. Uh, the Yamaha Colt Lake Weaver showing that's one with. Right. He's by Omaha. We've got two, uh, the Colt named Emmett. He's won already. Right. And I mean, we're we're excited, really excited about that group. We got a good group of young horses. They're already selling the yearlings and all selling right. right now so we're excited about him you know we've got uh with the studs we've got here uh we've got perfect hawk we got some perfect hawks in here that are looking good we've got a lester burns colts in here that are looking good i mean we're it's a variety copperfields we've got some of them in here that are looking good so we're pumped up about what we got and we've allowed uh i say we've allowed we've uh, we've got coached by other studs you know it didn't matter we're just trying to have something for everybody just let everybody come in and yes, have a sir. good I have noticed one thing. I told Mike, I said, Mike, y'all must handle these coats a lot because I walk up to a stall and yes, even sir. the babies, yeah. they're coming up. One, right. of them, one of them grabbed my donut. I guarantee ago. you they're but, spoiled. Yeah, these guys have done a great job preparing these coats and all. And they spend a lot of time with them, getting them broke and getting them where you can lead and, and, and fool with them. Well, sure I'm a are. firm believer in putting hands on. Yes, yeah, sir, me too. They leave them out in the pasture too long and, and they right. get a little hard right. to handle. We like leaving them out there and we'll turn these in and out some too, but I like to have them where we can go out there and catch well, them. Well, that's a good thing. Yes, sir. Okay. Get their minds right and all that. So, well, yes, it, it, you don't want them to be afraid. We, I watched Jerry Trim one the other day that, hey, yeah. he said he's been out in the pasture, said this was just brought in there. Right. I said, you can tell it. To that's you, right. You can. That's right. But I know right. you've got a lot of people out here this morning. We've got watching. a good, good crowd this morning and kind of laid back, and everybody's having a big time. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. Well, I want to thank you for yes, having sir. us over here. Yes, and. Yeah. Uh, Anything we can yeah. do for you? I'm, I'm assuming that during celebration, you're going to have people we'll, stop. We'll have yet. the same thing. You know, we'll still have some coats out here. We're going to keep enough where we can sell them. And of course, we got a show too, but we're going to have plenty of coats out here. And, and I'll tell you something else, and this is a new announcement today, and we're really, really, really excited about it. Uh, BJ Richards and, and Krista Allen, they're moving over here with us after the celebration. Hey, so that's, that's great. a big deal for us. Uh, we waited till this weekend kind of get everything ironed out but now they're bringing their pleasure horse group over here and, and they're going to be a part of part of the team here and I, we're pumped up about having that that kind of completes you. my circle here hey, you know well, you've got rem that's right and Terry yes, said don't ever brag about him because he'll go to his yeah, head so but i, I gotta try brag not on to i, I try not to but oh, we, yeah. we, we pumped yeah. him up a little oh but yeah now you got the richards guy hey. that's right yeah we've got you know, with our breeding program and our and our padded horse program, and now our pleasure horse program, it completes a circle, and we got something for everybody. That, that's you it. know, so we're that, we're really excited to announce that. that. RM's he's excited as I am. So of course, everything hey, we we do all this together, you know, and and uh, I, we're pumped up about it. Well, that's the main thing. Oh, yeah. Everybody working together that's and getting right. out here, and that's and right. If you got that circle, that's right. Next step will be a uh, trail riding group. Why well, you never know? Yeah, yeah, heck yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Jake and I talked about. Heck, we just keep building as long as we got, we got, long as we got the room. Well, give everybody your phone number. The yes, ones sir. that don't have it, they can give yeah. you a call and maybe come over there and sell. Yeah, places. anytime. My phone number is two seven zero five nine zero five two three five. 
Uh, just if y'all want, anybody wants to come over, come anytime, let us know, and uh, we'll try to accommodate you the best we can. All right. Well, I appreciate yes, you letting us yeah, come boy. over today. Thank you. Thank you much. Yes, sir. That's a smart move in my book. I mean, if you, when you got them all there, that just like I said, they'll probably end up with a trail riding because Allie Joel wants something she can train too. Well, I mean, you know, having BJ come over there, I mean, he's won the maiden twice. Yes. It, I mean, that that's a pretty good, hey, that, that's pretty a, good deal, I'd say. That's a good way to stack it in there, and, uh, and then you, you just don't ever know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We also did a interview while we was over there with a young man that's that's going to go. He says he's going for the big one this year. Oh, good. So, so let's let's go to Eli Cunningham. We are here at Spencer Benedict's at Jacobs Farm in Christiana, Tennessee. And I am with none other than Eli Cunningham. How you doing, Eli? Good. You ready for the celebration? Yes, sir. But okay, tell us about your horses. I know you got the medalist and yakety yak, so how are we gonna do? Good, hopefully. We're planning on trying to win the 11 and under and try to win the show pleasure. All right. Yeah. You'll show, this is the first time you'll show Yaki Yak at Celebration, though, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right. How many times have you shown him this year? Twice. Twice. Well, I watched you win on him over in Shelbyville. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the medalist, you and the medalist, y'all have had a, quite a career. Tell sure. us a little bit about it. Yeah, we've won three in North Carolina, one in the Smokies, a Celebration World Championship and many others. Oh yeah, I know. We, we get you on TV quite a bit. Your grandfather seems to like to watch you. Yes, sir. D does he keep you busy? Yeah. Or do you keep him busy? I keep him busy most you of keep, the time. You keep him busy most of the time? Yes, sir. Well, it's nothing like when you get out there and you get to show. But now, let's talk about Yakety Yak, because now that, you bought that horse from Gary Williams. Yes, sir. I believe it was for your mother to begin with, wasn't it? No, it's for me. Oh, they just but, thought it was for your mother. Yeah. But it was actually for you. So that just, was that a trick y'all played on her or what? Yes, sir. I know, because you did kept, I mean, your grandfather kept saying that, well, I'm going to buy my daughter a horse. Mm -hmm. And then he says, well, Eli ain't going to let her have it. Is that the way it went? Yes, sir. Well, how do you like him? I love him. He's a real good horse. So, have the Callaways like him? Yes, sir. You don't want to sell him though, right? No. Uh, I know, I believe you had an offer on him, didn't you? No, I've had, but I've had many offers on that list. <laughs> you had a bunch on them. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to show him the 11 under. Yes, sir. Do you know the class number yet? No. But you'll show in the preliminary and the, and the gilding division. Yes, sir. And then show in the show pleasure 11 under youth division. With Yakety Yak. With Yakety Yak. Yes, sir. Well, how many days are you going to practice before then? Uh, I'll probably practice at the in the ring, the Champions Arena, mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. before the celebration. All right. All right, well, we're going to show a little video of your horses, let everybody get a good look at you, and I want to wish you luck. Thank you. And I'm going to wish your grandfather luck, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> Eli, Eli's a pistol now. He, he is something else. He, he says, uh, he says, yeah, I'll do an interview. Take me over there. <laughs> so I'm ready. I tell you, uh, we, we've had the interviews and we've had coats led around, so let's go watch some victory passes. Yeah, but I think we're going to hit up a Heart of a Champion yeah. horse show. That's always one of my favorites because it sponsors all the girls' sports in uh, That's it. Bedford County. I was very proud to serve as the organist for that horse show. Mar Marcy did a good job. Yes, she did. she did. I'm a little lady in Casey Wright for Woods and Robert. Your three-year-old Marion Gildon winner. That horse built as the class went on and got better and better. Yeah. Tahano and Daniel Smith. Now, right here is one that I honestly thought this one was fixing to get the blue. Because he he just never messed up flat out walk, buddy. He got it done. Yes, he did. 
There was a lot of good horses that showed over there. There was a lot. And I'm going to point out the fact that uh, the USDA was not there, but there was not one horse that didn't look good. Now, I remember showing against this horse as a yearling. Yep. And look at him now. They say the year lead colts don't make. I am March Madness and Rider Wright for Woods and Robert. He did a good well, job. Well, now, that's him. Debbie Woods' horse there. But youth ponies. I know, but. Hey, that pony division at Celebration. Roger Richards. Um, Junior showed that horse as a yearling. Mm -hmm. Well, rider right, he goes in that celebration riding that horse like that. He don't got a shot at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, that's gonna be a tough class now. I, I mean a tough class. Yes, it is. Them, them youth classes are gonna be tougher than that, though. Oh, yeah. Opinion. I agree. Dark rain and Taylor Walters are right here, dark rain. California. Dark rain and Taylor Walters, District 522. Taylor does That a good horse job. built as the class went on. I timed off that Taylor horse, as a matter of fact. Dark rain. Tell you what, Taylor does a, she, She's a good, good jockey. Now, she really is. She puts it all together. That's an equestrian. Yeah. That's, That's she's more than a jockey. That's yeah. an equestrian. You got it. I stand corrected, Taylor. <laughs> I know when she wanted to uh, counter, do a counter class, mm -hmm. they said she practiced every day. I believe it. And that, I mean, that was just something else. Well, we're going to move on. So here's Marshall County. Good old Fayetteville horse. Is it Fayetteville, right? You know, no, that's no, no, that's Lewisburg. Lewisburg. Three-year-old Marin Gildan winner. Ladies' privilege. Thomas Derrickson. You know, Missy and Tim Johnson has a good strong horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really do. You know, I've been real. It's been neat to see Thomas come on as a horse trainer. I mean, he, he sits he up. He presents the horse well, and he does a good job. Yeah, I like the idea of him being at the breeders, but mm -hmm. watching him work here and train, and he, he does a good job. Yes, he, he really does. does. I'm the boss lady. She might have been reserved, but she was a bad girl, buddy. Mm -hmm. She, you know, uh, Bob Adcock is such a nice guy. I met uh, him for the first time over the International this year. Uh, oh, he's super and just good a, dude. Just a really good guy. And I, and I love his horses. He has a big time. You know, he enjoys what he's doing. I met him back right after we first started doing Water a horse, and that was over 20 years ago. But he, he, he and his brother both, and they were just super good people. Honored in Texas. I tell you what. I've always liked this horse. This amateur stallion class. It's going to be loaded, but right there is one of them that's going to be loaded. Because mm -hmm. he is flat out good. I've seen him. I've never seen him where I didn't think he looked great. I mean, he kind of has a steak horse way going he about does. him. He really does. He's got everything that you would want. And that is a fact. And right here is Earl Smith and Courtney Luttrell. Now this is one Jerry Williams is really fond of because... I can see why. Well, he, he's the one that initially sold it to him. <laughs> he said he called them and told them that he had a horse they might want to take a look at. Courtney, now she's just a good, she, you know, she, she's a good equestrian too. Mm -hmm. Get it done. She knows how to present a horse. Cavender. Don't put a stir that pot at celebration. You know the the state class this year, that qualifier class, the two the two splits, it's wide open. 
So it's it's going to come down to who's walking does the talking the best. That's it. That right there, that horse right there gets your attention, and I mean he gets it and, and mm -hmm. keeps it. He keeps it. All right, now we're going to go up to Pulaski, the red carpet. Red Alert. Last year she came in and won War Trace. This year she comes in and wins Pulaski. And that horse showed in Lewisburg the night before. Now this is the condition of our horses. And there, that's a light colored horse, but it's a walk-in booger. I like that horse right there now. And Kim Lewis, you couldn't find a finer lady anywhere. And here's the chief and Clay Sanderson for Kilgore and Barnes. You know, they always seem to find that horse. Mm -hmm. Now they do. So he's got everything it will take, believe me. I like his head, so he's up in the bridle, yeah. shaking, from the, shaking just good. Timed up right. Mm -hmm. Going to be a good two-year-old stay in classes. I can tell you that. And here's Mark One. I don't care what it is. This is one of my favorite horses right here. Because he, he is automatic. Oh, yeah. You put him on cruise control, buddy. He just, he just got everything it takes. That is what you call a walking horse. It's timed up. Perfect head shape, back end. He's got all the qualities, every one of them. Well, I mean, he's competed in just about every performance yeah. division. Yeah. And yeah. won a lot. Oh, yeah. Honor and remember and Dan Waddell for Kim Lewis, your open specialty winner. Dan is going to be the next Jimmy McConnell. He, he is in more classes. And I'm talking about top to bottom and he has, has a barn full of good horses. Oh yeah. He is something else as a trainer. Honor and remember. That's another Kim. Kim will end up on that horse. <laughs> you never it's tell. possible. Oh, now we're going to go to commercial. <laughs> yeah, I'd say our sponsors would probably like their uh, yep. roll of commercial. <laughs> yeah, roll of commercial. <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. After months of practicing, Ali Joe Jacobs and Teton Charlie are ready to tackle the youth show pleasure division in the 2024 World Championship Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. Ali Joe will also be showing Cole Hahn in the youth 11 and under gelding division in hopes of winning top honors. Ali Joe and Haas will be competing in the youth pony competition, rounding out her lineup of her top contenders. Be sure to stand and cheer for Ali Joe Jacobs as she rides for your approval. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee walking horse is the perfect family horse by young and old, whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee walking horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. 
folks. This is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. All righty, here we go. We're going to go to Fedbull and Wartrace, the last two shows before the celebration. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one other, but we didn't get to attend it because I was at, down at... Uh, yeah, we, we missed you over at the uh, the Tweeba Splash Show I and know. Youth and Halter Show. There's some good horses over there. Well, I was, I was over at Spencer's. I was going to interview Allie Joe, but she was in the hayfield. <laughs> Here you go, Jake Ryan and Harlan Laurent. This horse right here showed twice. Showed at Fedville with Harlan, and then it showed with in War Tracer. Did they build a new ring at Fedville? Yes. They changed the ring. Looks uh, good. It, it looked, I thought it looked outstanding. I love a bay horse. Oh, I do too. I always thought they was pretty. Oh, yeah. War Trace. Tea Time Charlie and Allie Jo Jacobs. You know, Allie Jo tickles me to death. She, she knows everybody. She's not afraid to talk to you. <laughs> She gets it done now. now I'm, I'm gonna tell you something else. She now, could be president one day. She is going to show that horse in uh, the, the show pleasure division. Mm -hmm. But now she just uh, she she's very involved with the horses. She even trains her own spotty horse. So that that's one division that <laughs> that Spencer needs to put in there is 11 under training division. There you go. And here's Jake Ryan again with Harlan Laurent. That's it. Well, Harper was one one night in. But that, I thought that was so neat because that horse showed twice, two nights in a row. Our horses can do anything that anything anybody else can do. Hey, I, I believe that with all my heart. It's just, uh, and I thought that horse looked super good. Made a great show. Mm -hmm. And here's I'm acting up in Chris Blevins, far Chris Blevins, show pleasure amateur reserve winner. Pretty nice show pleasure horse. Hey, that, there was a lot of good show pleasure horses in there. There's acting up in Chris. And then you got Sir. Now, Sir was third. Like sir. Walks off that butt. So how long has Jerry Harris owned this horse? I raised him. He, he was the one that everybody liked him because he walked off that butt. <laughs> And here's, am I the only one in Blaze Picard for Shane Porterfield, your three-year-old Marion Gilded winner? At War Trace, she was. Hey, Blaze did a good job, and she really did. Right there's Chill's main man and Jerry Williams with three-year-old Marion Gildon. Great ride. He made a good show. Mm -hmm. I thought Jerry did super.
Jerry works hard at this. And right here, honors to Mr. Guest, Wayne Wilson, for Evergreen Walking Horse Farm. Your show pleasure winner. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. that, that's a good horse. That's Virginia's grandfather. Right here, give you cold chills and Jesse Barnes, your three-year-old stallion winner. You know, I'm gonna tell you, I've watched Jesse work this horse at the barn because I've got a two-year-old up there with Jesse, and he's that good every day of the week. Well, every day of the week. Day. Well, I'm gonna tell you, he, he's really getting some attention because he, he's one of the young ones. Oh, he's that's gonna be a stake horse one day. Y'all hide and watch. Well, he's a good one. Jesse's doing a good job. Okay. Here's Titleist Masterpiece and Savannah Williams for Dennis Parks. Your amateur Baron Gilding. Another great ride. There's a lot of good horses in there, but now some of these classes were pretty good size. We had a, a lady that was doing inspections that was doing her job the proper way. And that's the way they were reason they were so good. That's why I say when when the VMOs uh, here's cuz I gotta talk about this. Cousin Bob now he he's a piece of work. Tanner does a fantastic job with him. When our our DQPs pass a horse, you can bet money he's pretty much in. Not that they're perfect, cause they're not. They're like everybody else. But now the, the inspector we had in uh, War Trace, she she was very. I heard strange. a lot of a lot of good reports about she her. She did she did her job. She inspected horses. Did she turn some down? Yes. But I watched her inspect one, and the DQP had checked the horse. The horse moved a little but he come back to that spot twice and the horse didn't move so he gave the benefit of the doubt to the horse however when she inspected him she went to that spot he moved she came back he didn't move but when she came back to it again he moved and he then again so she gave him every opportunity and then she turned him down which she should have that's when i said this lady right here is going to be straight, and she was. Now she, you couldn't ask for anything. Any well, I mean, you, the the VMOs aren't supposed to be checking horses. They're That's supposed to be overseeing overseen. DQPs. And we ain't going to be able to talk much more. No. no <laughs> we're we're gonna, I appreciate you coming and being with us today and putting your input in. Always and a pleasure. We will see everybody next week. <laughs> Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, peace, start talking.